This week on TGC News, Gearson releases a 2311, Gunworks has a more affordable rifle, Canik has a new pistol, POF has a new lever gun, and High Point goes big. Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News, the only gun news show that covers things that you actually care about. My name is John Patton. I'm going to start this week's show off by answering a question that I've been getting quite a bit on social media. No, TGC will not be at SHOT Show this year. It's very expensive, and my return on that is less and less every year. I am focusing my efforts on GunCon in June instead. If you're a brand that wants to be involved with GunCon, let me know. Now, the news. First up this week, a little callback to last week's show where we were the first to share pricing on the new Oracle 2311. Well, as it turns out, they are not the only 2311 in town. This is the Witness 2311 from Gearson. Will the real 2311 please stand up? This one is a little bit closer to a standard double stack 1911 that you might have seen before. I'm speculating a bit because they're bad at stuff and didn't actually put together a product page. Just this announcement and this one image. It appears as though these have a five inch barrel, even though it says four different barrel lengths will be available. And you get either the terrible sights on the one on the top or fiber optic target style sights. We can also see an ambi safety and some front strap checkering as well as a pick rail under the nose. The image also shares that we will see a 17 round 9 mil, 11 round 45 ACP version, and yes, the big boy 15 round 10 mil version. Sign me up for the 10 mil. The most interesting part of all of this is the pricing. They say that these start at $999. That is pretty darn affordable for this type of gun. So if it's good, then we might have a winner on our hands. You know what definitely is a winner? The Alias system from Neomag. The Alias by Neomag offers unparalleled concealment, strength, and modularity. Using one of their universal holster clips and receivers, you can mount your holstered gun to just about anything, your belt, your vertex bag or safe, your nightstand or desk, or even without a belt at all using their new beltless receiver. Click your holster into the next evolution of everyday carry. To get yourself a free universal holster clip, when you buy your first receiver, use our code TGC alias over at theneomag.com. Next up this week, something more affordable from a company that traditionally sells some pretty expensive gear. The gun is called the Workman, and it's from a company called Gunworks. At the core, you have a Gunworks GLR stainless steel action and 22-inch barrel chambered in 6.5 PRC with a Gunworks brake on the end. This is dropped into their own carbon fiber stock. On top of that, you have the Revic RS25 5-25 by 56 optic, and this will be zeroed and have markings on the turret to match the ballistics of Hornady ELD match ammo. This comes as a complete package only. That's sort of the Gunworks MO, rifle packages. The price for such a thing, 4950 bucks. Now, that might cause some sticker shock, but if you consider the price for something like the SIG Cross PRS, which is about $2,500, or are other rifles like that, plus the cost of a premium optic, like my current favorite, Mark V HD from Leupold, which is about $2,100, plus the scope mount, which can be upwards of $250, you're getting close to that five grand price point. And I don't see SIG making claims of a thousand yards out of the box like Gunworks does. It's definitely not cheap and a thousand yards can be hit with a lot less money, but I suppose if you want performance right out of the box with no BS, this might be an option. Moving on, Ruger has a new version of the AR556 MPR. This one is seemingly aimed at competition shooters, although there's been very little effort in marketing this. The big changes are pretty simple. It has a Magpul PRS light stock, a Ruger Elite 452 two-stage trigger that's red for some reason, a non-ambi red safety, and an 18-inch proof research carbon fiber barrel. Pricing on this is $2,049, which is a jump of $920 over the standard MPR. 
It's not super offensive considering those barrels are about 900 by themselves. You know what, let's just jump right into some industry news. And I smell disappointment and struggles out on the horizon. But first, Pete Brownell, owner of Second Adventure Group, the parent company of Brownell's Crow Shooting Supply and AR15.com, is being named CEO of all of their brands. Now, this is not the first time he's been in this role, and it's kind of great to see someone that genuinely enjoys the shooting sports at the head of these brands, which is not always the case with a lot of gun companies out there. What is that? That smell? I, I know that... Is he... You know the drill. The struggle bus is back, and this time, Lancer Systems is riding shotgun with Logo Arms. Lancer announced on January 1st that they are no longer the ones importing the Logo Alien pistol. According to the press release, effective January 15th, 2023, Logo Arms USA will assume the sales, marketing, customer service, distribution, and warranty repair services for the Alien Pistol in the US. So basically anything that went through Lancer is now going to go through Logo Arms USA. It seems very much like, thanks for getting us into the US market, now go back to your corner. Seems like that kind of move from Logo and we also have no idea if they will do a good job managing all of this stuff during and after this transition. I am, as usual, thoroughly skeptical that this won't be a complete show. Side note, I actually filmed a review on the Logo Alien just the other day, so subscribe if you want to see that. Before we get into our top stories, how's about a deal of the week? This is a new thing I'm trying out. If you guys like it, let me know. This time it's from Wheeler, specifically the brand new Fat Sticks set, which is sort of a preset torque wrench set. Wheeler makes a ton of tools for working on your guns, and if you use our link, you can get this set cheaper than anywhere else, including Amazon, and you can also get 20% off everything else using our link. It has to be ours. Check it out, link in the description. Now, the heavy hitters for this week. We've got three of them. Get ready, it's awesome. Let's start with Canik. They've got a new one called the Canik SFX Rival S. Essentially, what you have here is a Canik Rival, which is a great gun, but now with a metal frame. Ooh, right, that's interesting. The frame now has checkering cut into the front strap and interchangeable back straps as well. Then you have the slides dripping in serrations and speed holes. Oh yeah, speed holes. And an optic cut and a flat face trigger, ambi controls and a magwell. It's stacked with features. There are two different colors available. The black is called the dark side and black. And then you have the standard Rival S, which has the high spots polished and it looks Awesome. I love the way that looks. I love polished guns and man, that looks really good. Now, here's the interesting thing. The price. The standard rival is 680 bucks. This one, 899. So a bump of 220 bucks to get a metal frame. I would be stupid not to compare this to the Smith & Wesson metal frame gun that came out recently, which has an MSRP of 100 bucks more than this. The difference is that the Smith & Wesson weighs about the same as the polymer version that it copies, whereas the Canik tips the scales at almost a full pound heavier than the one it copies. Do you guys think this Smith & Wesson is worth a hundred bucks more? Let me know down in the comments. Can't wait to see that. Our next heavy hitter this week is one from POF USA. It's called the Tombstone, and yes, it's playing on that Old West vibe that's very popular right now. Izzy, can you set me up with a cowboy hat and like two pistols? Like, I'll tell you what, I'm not mad about it. The Tombstone is unlike anything they make right now in that it's a lever action. Yes, POF has made a lever action and it's chambered in nine mil. To me, this is the most modern looking lever gun out right now. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen another lever gun chambered in 9 mil. So this might be a first. It's got a Magpul stock from a Remington 870, a big throw lever, a single stage three and a half pound trigger, pick rail on the top of the receiver with a set of excess ghost ring sights, a 10 and a half inch M-lock rail setup, a free floated fluted barrel with a two port brake on the nose, and it comes with one 20 round magazine. The magazines are proprietary to POF, 
but they are the same as the ones they used in their Phoenix 9mm pistol. The first thing that came to mind when I thought of this was shooting subsonic 9mm with a can. A big old, like, 165 grain pill or something like that with big old can on there. That would be fun. I'm not a fan of proprietary mags, though. I, I kind of wish it had, like, a CZ Scorpion mag or something like that. But that's not a huge deal breaker for me. The price tag on these bad boys. Get ready. $1,962 in black and 2097 in flat dark earth. That is not cheap. Granted, this appears to be a very unique gun, but man, that stings a little bit. The question is, I don't know, what color do you want yours to be? <laughs> and capping us off this week, a new gun that the industry has been waiting for for years now. The High Point JXP-10. It is a 10 mil pistol from High Point. The carbine has been out for a few years now, and finally, we have a pistol version. Now, this is interesting for a couple reasons. First, it's got a 5.2-inch threaded barrel. Yeah, they, you could suppress this thing. Seeing a 10 mil come with a threaded barrel is a rare thing. It's as rare as hen's teeth. They come standard with 10-round mags that are interchangeable with the carbine mags. And on top of that, it does bear some resemblance to the YC-9, a.k.a., the Yeet Cannon that we've been dying to see hit the market. You can see some of the slide serrations and the grip panels being similar. I've also been told that the gun will accept the same optic mounts that the Yeet Cannon will accept. However, they're not available yet. So I, I don't know if that matters right now. I'm also told the front sight is interchangeable with Glock front sights. Oh, and there's finally a pick rail for a light. What is going on when High Point is doing more things that people want? Like this. I gotta be honest with you. I'm, I'm legit excited about this. And I know, you wanna know the price. Before I tell you, you have to hit like on this video. Just, just do it. Okay, thank you, I appreciate you. The price tag for the JXP 10 mil High Point is 225 bucks. Holy sh**. Yes, I will take three of them, thank you very much. The trigger will be hot garbage, and I don't care, I need it. In the comments, tell me the first sentence that popped into your head when I told you about this gun.